In this video, I go over mainly hardware, but I also talk a lot about how it feels to use AR. Now, you can watch all the videos that you want, but the only way to really get a sense of it is to go out and try one, so I'll leave a link down below on how you can do that. Otherwise, enjoy the video! The MetaQuest Pro is here, but what exactly is it? It's not the next Quest 2, because the Quest 2 is a VR headset. The Quest Pro is focused on AR, or XR, extended reality. Now you probably already know what VR is just because you're watching this video, but let's do a quick recap. The concept with a VR headset is you can put the headset on, everything around you goes blank, and you can be transported to a new world be playing mini golf with your friends on Mount Everest, or you could be exploring the ice caves of Hyperion. Uh, but XR or AR takes a whole different approach using a very similar technology. With an AR headset like the Quest Pro, in an ideal world, you put on the headset and nothing around you changes. Now the difference here is instead of transporting yourself to a different world, you're conjuring up virtual items and digital goods in your own home environments. Say you're in your living room and you want to pull up a couple of extra TVs so you can watch three or four games at a time. Or, if you're at your desk, you're working on your laptop, you look over to your right and you can click and drag a model from your laptop to the space right there. So you're able to see the 3D model that you're working on right next to you on the table right in front of you. That's the whole dream with extended reality. But let's talk a little bit more about that after the unboxing. And woof, this thing is heavy. Now one thing that Facebook has made clear several times is that this headset is not for gaming. As you can see, there are no games on this box where there were a ton on the Quest 2 box. Yeah, this Quest is meant for enterprise. It's meant to be used to get stuff done. Now, that doesn't mean that it can't game, and we will talk about that too. Alright, let's slide off this cover. Jeez, it's really in there. You got that nice sustainable cardboard packaging, MetaQuest Pro, very simple on the outside, and there it is. Wow. And I've seen a lot of videos of this headset, and I was in love with the matte black aesthetic. Look at that. It looks really sleek, and I would say it looks pretty much the same size, if not a little bit smaller than the Quest 2. Let's go in and see the controllers. Now, these controllers, first thing you'll notice is that there is no ring like you do have with the Quest 2 controllers. Instead, what you have is these three cameras. This is really cool because that means each of these controllers are actually self-tracked. What that means is that it uses these cameras to help locate itself within the environment that you're in, separately from the headset. Whereas on the Quest 2, the headset would use its cameras to see where the controllers were in relation to yourself. Now, this may seem like a bit of over-engineering, and it kind of is, because each of these have processors in them to compute where they are before they send that information over to the headset. But, they come with a lot of benefits. In a lot of situations where you're in a game, say you're playing with a bow and arrow, your right hand can lose tracking if it's right up next to your headset. And that's because the headset camera is having a difficult time figuring out where those rings are. You can even, now that they're tracking themselves, bring your controller back to the back of your head where there are no headset cameras underneath you. You can toss it into the next room and your controller will still know where it is. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a fringe case benefit, but it just goes to improve the overall experience. Another nice thing about these controllers is that they are backwards compatible with the Quest 2. And boy, um, if you thought $80 for a pair of Joy-Cons was expensive, or $180 for a pair of Quest 2 controllers was expensive, these guys will run you... <laughs> these guys will run you $300 a pair. And yes, they are compatible with the Quest 2, but I don't know how many people are gonna buy $300 controllers for their $400 headset. That's a very steep price to play, pay for nicer tracking, but hey, if you're competitively doing this, then 
yeah, go for it. <laughs> Let's continue with the unboxing. Now, it looks like the box is empty, but if you bring up this tab in the middle, that reveals your charging dock, which <laughs> looks pretty slick. This is definitely form over function. It is kind of a puzzle getting your headset on there and then getting your controllers in there. You should probably put your controllers on first, uh, but yeah, definitely a little more complicated than it should be or feels like it needs to be. Um, however, the size is super nice. Let me bring over my Quest 2 dock. As you can see, there's a spot for your headset and your two controllers. They slip right in and they look like they belong. Let me know if you want to see more about this. While we're here, let's talk about battery life, and this was kind of a shock. Just two hours of battery life for the Quest headset itself. Your controllers do get six hours, which, you know, it's, it's a nice peace of mind, but if I'm taking off my headset to charge it, I'm putting in the controllers as well. Uh, luckily, you can plug this in and use it while it's plugged in, but come on, Meta, we don't want to be tethered to anything. We want to be able to walk around and use this headset for a little more than two hours at a time, but we'll take what we can get for now, I guess. Underneath the charging dock, you do get these light blockers, and <laughs> these light blockers are a little bit of a contentious point right now because they're just partial light blockers. They do look nice, feel nice, and snap in really quickly. They are magnetic, so you just, you just slide them on like that, and they stay there. They feel really good, and although they don't block out your entire peripheral field of view, you're still gonna be seeing everything below the headset because that's uncovered. They do do a good job of blocking out just peripheral light or any glare that you'd be getting from all the lights around you. I have a lot of lamps in here as you can see. And with the light blockers, the lens look a lot clearer. However, they're charging $50 for a full light blocker, which is the same exact thing, just with a little bit of extra silicone across the bottom. Now, why they didn't just include that with the Quest Pro is beyond me, especially if they could have just done that instead of these partial light blockers. Now, whether or not you want to use light blockers or full light blockers or partial light blockers is going to be dependent on the application that you're using. The Quest Pro is obviously a mixed reality headset first, so theoretically most of the time you don't even need them, and I've been fine most of the time without them too. However, there are applications I would use on the Quest Pro where I do want that full immersive experience, like Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, so good, and VR Chat. Yeah, $50 for a full light blocker is just utterly ridiculous, I'm just gonna wait until a third party option comes out because I don't want to give them the satisfaction of charging me $50 for that. Okay, enough ranting, let's talk about the actual headset, and again, this looks super sleek, I think it looks cool, and I love the matte black, especially since it matches perfectly with my laptop of choice, the Surface Laptop 4 in matte black as well. The head strap does look and feel really durable, I think they learned from the mistake that was their Quest 2 Elite strap, a lot of those ended up breaking, so <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen here. Now, this whole approach is very different from the Quest 2. With the Quest 2, the whole weight of the headset was basically resting on your cheekbones, and after a while, that got pretty uncomfortable. Here, instead, you have this forehead plate, and this forehead plate is where most of the weight of the front is gonna lay, but because of the batteries being moved to the back, as you can see this thicker back right here, the weight is a little bit more evenly distributed. Ideally, that should feel a lot more comfortable, but to be honest, in my personal experience, and in the experience of a couple friends that I had try on this headset, uh, the first hour or so is perfectly fine, pretty comfortable, but overall, the weight of the headset is being concentrated on this forehead strap, and after an hour and a half or two hours of use, it does start to get a little uncomfortable and maybe even a little bit sore, which is disappointing. Overall though, I would say positive move as far as strap mechanism goes. Let's take a look at the outside of this thing, and you can see four tracking cameras, just like the Quest 2 had, but there's also this additional camera for color pass-through, and that is one of the headlining features of this thing and the whole reason I got it for myself, so we will talk a little bit about that later. 
before we get into eye and face tracking though, let's talk about the lenses here, and this is also a really exciting new thing coming to the Quest. These are pancake lenses. Um, without going into all the technicalities of it, what it means is that these are lighter and also just provide a much less distorted image, even all the way up to the edges. Now, the issue that we see with the Quest 2 is you have this field of view, right? You have this range where you're seeing pixels. However, the focused area is just in the middle. If you're looking straight forward, everything looks focused, but as soon as you look to the edges of the screen or at the edges of the lens, you're gonna start seeing some fringing and some blurriness, and that's because the lenses were not as efficient or as clear around the edges. Now the pancake lenses on the Quest Pro pretty much solved that issue, and it does look really, really cool. First of all, in general, text and picture quality is a lot better. Now, I won't get into tech specs because that doesn't really matter as much as the actual end experience. And I'm not saying that just because I don't know the specs. Anyways, picture, much clearer. Colors, much brighter and much more accurate thanks to the quantum dot technology that they're using in these panels instead. Now, yes, we are not getting OLED level blacks anymore, but being a mixed reality headset, that doesn't really matter as much in those XR applications. You may miss those a little bit in the actual just immersive VR experiences, but I would take the resolution bump and the color bump any day. So overall, I'm okay with the change. So the main reason that most people got this headset, the color pass through, let's talk about it. Yes, it's not perfect. It kind of looks like you're getting a view through two potato powered flip phones, but wow, it actually does really add to the XR experience. The colors are really definitely not perfect, especially if you're in a darker environment. It's going to struggle to parse out the colors of each object and maybe even distinguish objects that are further away from you from each other. But what the Quest is basically doing is taking in a live feed of everything around you, constructing a 3D real-time model of it, applying colors to that, and then bringing that into the virtual world that it's creating for you. That is a lot of processing, that is a lot of data, and to do all that instantaneously, especially if you're moving your head from one angle to the other, that, I don't know, that is really impressive. I'm impressed that they're even able to do this much because the XR experience or the AR experience that you get as a result is impressive. They got the spirit of it and that is really exciting. Another headlining feature that I was not too hyped about at first was face tracking. Face tracking which comes along with eye tracking. Eye tracking I get because there's a lot of utility in knowing where your eyes are pointed, especially in menus being able to quick select a different weapon. That's super cool. It also has practical utility too because what the system actually does if you have eye tracking on is it does foveated rendering. What that means is that it's only spending energy to really render the highest amount of pixels where you're looking so it can relax that GPU process everywhere else on the screen. Apparently that does help with battery life. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So yes, eye tracking definitely makes a lot of sense. Now let's take that eye tracking and bring it in with facial tracking. Facial tracking is really interesting. It does work really well, surprisingly well, especially considering I can't find these face tracking cameras. What it does is it replicates your expressions and not just your expressions, it's replicating the little movements of your lips, of your cheeks, of your eyebrows even. You can lift just one eyebrow up. Um, and it's doing all that with eye tracking as well so you can look somewhere, you can give someone a devious look if you want to. At first, I thought it seemed pretty gimmicky, but then I thought a little bit more about what makes VR so appealing. So think of it this way. When you're on a phone call with a friend, you don't really get a sense of presence. You know they're not there. Even if you upgrade that to a video chat, no matter how good the camera quality is, you don't feel like they're there. There's no sense of presence. Now, the first moment my friend and I hopped into VR and he invited me to his virtual home and I saw his avatar standing there and talking to me, 
That was mind-blowing. Then I truly got a sense of presence. I could look over at him and I could truly make eye contact with him. I could wave at him and we were talking face to face pretty much. Where it really comes together is the little minute details in the facial expressions. There are all sorts of little cues and micro expressions that people make and they go a long way. Apparently something like 80% of communication is physical. It's facial expressions, it's your movements and how you place your eyes. And adding that to the VR experience, it bleeds into the uncanny valley a little bit, but I can definitely see how it's going to add so much more intimacy to the experience, um, especially if you're the kind of person to uh, meet people in VR and hang out with people in VR regularly. This is going to go a long way. Especially in the workplace, this is going to go a long way. If this is being used for meetings, you're gonna be able to have a much more immersive social experience. I'm gonna ask it again. What exactly is the Quest Pro? Um, it's cool, for sure. It's fun, yeah. But I would say, more than anything, it's a proof of concept. Because the color pass-through is far from perfect, because we don't have applications that truly leverage all the cool futuristic advancements this thing's got, like eye tracking and face tracking and that color pass-through, it really is a proof of concept. However, if you're using this for purely VR experiences, it's fantastic. It's got that higher resolution, it's got that face and eye tracking for games whenever they start supporting that, and it just feels a lot more comfortable. Whether that's worth $1,500 when you could just get a Quest 2 for 400 bucks, I don't know, it's up to you. It's really just marginal benefits, but it is, it is one of the nicer things out there. I am curious to see how this is going to be used professionally. I definitely see the benefit in using this for 3D modeling. Obviously you're going to do all your work on your computer, but then to be able to visualize that and test it right in front of you with the headset, fantastic. And as far as using it for meetings, um, I don't know how many companies out there are really going to fully adopt this. You need everyone in VR to really make this a genuinely solid experience. So. It's really, yeah, it's really going to rely on those employers that are kind of telling their employees to use this. Accenture and Microsoft are working pretty closely with Meta to bring this into the workforce. And, I mean, if they're doing it, if they get enough employees to lead the movement, then yeah, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't make it in the professional world, too. It's just this particular starting point doesn't quite feel professional yet. Again, it's a proof of concept, but hey, you gotta start somewhere. Anyways, I really like this thing. I think it truly is a window into our future. The window's a little dirty, a little hazy, kinda tiny, but nonetheless, it's pretty cool to see what's on the other side. Hey, one day we'll question how we even did anything without it. And what I mean by that is XR, AR, not the, this Quest Pro specifically. So there you have it, my review of the Quest Pro and first impressions. I'm just taking this and adding it to the huge pile of reviews out there already on YouTube, so I hope you did get some benefit from watching mine. And if you did, please consider hitting that like button because it really does help me out with the algorithm. And um, let me know if this is something that you plan to get yourself. If it is, why are you getting it? If it's not, why don't you want to get it? Uh, besides the price, that's obviously way too high. <laughs> Maybe this would have been better as a $1,000 device. But anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Alright, we can talk tech specs if you really want to. Yes, the Quest 2 does have a higher resolution, but with the higher pixel density and the pancake lens of the Quest Pro, you get a better experience in my Quest Pro. Refresh rates. I don't really care to I don't really care too much about refresh rates, but you get a lot more options in the Quest 2 and it goes all the way up to 120, so just 90. Field of view is a little bit better on the Quest Pro, not that noticeable. Yep, optical adjustments, we already talked about those. Processor. 
The Snapdragon XR2 is a lot better on the Quest Pro. You're going to be able to run much more intensive applications, and you're just going to have a lot less shuddering overall. So that's great. Uh, 12 gigs of RAM instead of 6. Storage, 256, the highest option that's available. And yeah, battery life, disappointing. Head tracking, obviously. Expression tracking, yes. All right, specs, super boring. Here you go.